it's been a steady sequence of very large rounds, it means we are in bubble territory. And if you notice, very few people are saying we're in bubble territory. Right. You're the first person who's actually I, come I out will and said say it. it. No one wants to say it because no one wants to break it because everyone wants to cash out before it's over. Well, and there's this thing that for venture capital, like when I, I've done this before, I've been around the bubbles yeah. before, and, and usually it's, it's everyone saying, I'm paying too much, but the guy I'm saying, selling to is paying too little. So usually the venture capitalists say, you know, the early rounds are, are really too high. These companies are too highly valued. But the public markets are getting a great deal when we do the IPO. Yeah. But it, sound, but it sounds like you're saying you're seeing, we're seeing it throughout? Even in this we're seeing an expansion of valuation even at this, from the seed stage all the way up. Is there desperation here? I definitely feel it. Desperation for what? Desperation to not miss out on what will be the next big thing. What do you think of all of this frenzy around secret apps, secret and whisper? Well, we looked at a lot of them and talked to a lot of the founders. Um, we came to the conclusion they don't really make the world any better. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Um, that they would be used too much to haze people and bully kids. And we basically came out of that thinking, we don't want to be involved with bullying of kids. They're very hard to defend against. What about wearables? I know you're an investor in Pebble. Yeah, uh, Pebble's doing fantastic. We're growing 2x the rate that we did last year. You know, wearables are really a category of things from Google Glass to the Pebble Watch, for example. And... Uh, I don't know of other wearables that are growing, but I can tell you that uh, the watch space is definitely growing very quickly. We did over 40 million of revenue last year. But they haven't gone mainstream yet. You know, Not yet. Will they? I don't know, and I really hope they do. <laughs> Has, does, does the introduction of the Android development tools for wearables change the game, particularly for companies that have tried to set up their own sort of OS, like, like Basis, like Fitbit, like, like Up, like, like Pebble? That is a great question. It's the Android announcement's the only one that I've taken seriously for, as a watch competitor to Pebble. The difficulty, though, is Android really requires 64 megabytes of memory to compete in, or to, to operate in. Uh -huh. The Pebble OS runs in 128K of memory. Really? So our goal is to be the most high volume watch supplier, a smart watch supplier, and we can't do it with Android. Because then you've got the battery opportunities and you, you can yeah. last for a longer time. And that, that's right. We don't want to increase the component costs where we're limited to only having a $250 watch. We want to move down into the $50 watch zone. What do you make of the fact that Apple hasn't come out with a smart watch yet? Um, it's the belief, uh, at, well, I know, I've heard from people at Apple that uh, engineers that I've tried to recruit and are recruiting, that it's difficult to get a new project accepted at Apple. Mm -hmm. That in the jobs era, if jobs believe in the product, you got the resources. In the Tim Cook era, you have to put together a spreadsheet that shows how much this business is going to be worth, how big the market is, and will it materially add to Apple's revenue. So those are the thoughts that come out of someone who has a supply chain background. So I don't believe Apple is best set up to succeed.